I think it was like around March when um, they were talking. I mean, I remember them talking like a few weeks before. And then when it came down to it, when they closed the schools, um, we continued to work, I think only a week after, trying to get stuff, you know, going. They talked to us about what was gonna happen, you know, if we're not, you know, we're not gonna come back, you know, real soon. You know, we had meetings and everything. and. Then they finally just closed the school down. And I think I was home for maybe two weeks, three weeks. Might have been the third week. Um, then they kept telling us, check our emails, check our emails. So I got this email and it says, please fill out this questionnaire. So, you know, I filled out the questionnaire. It talked about um, the, you know, the COVID. It talked about our willingness to work, everything else like that. Uh, so I wasn't quite sure, you know, what they were getting at. And, I think I submitted mine. I did the questionnaire, submitted it, and like within an hour, the human resources lady called me, and she goes, "Hey, Lana, you just submitted your." And I goes, "You know," and I was like, "Yeah, right. I just submitted like an hour ago." And she says, "We're calling you to see if you're willing to work and, you know, take curriculum out to the students, you know, because we want to, we need to get it out there." So, you know, and I was like, "Sure," you know. I mean, I didn't hear anything around here in Warm Springs yet. So I started doing the curriculum. We um, met at the school. All the, all the teachers, like, they got all the stuff together. The district just starts sending out books and homework and, you know, by grade level. So we got on to um, the excursions. We loaded up excursions with, you know, grade level work, uh, reading books, um, all kinds of stuff. All of this, you know, before they even started submitting out the computers. And um, so we start loading those up. We started doing uh, every day. We did every day for two weeks, I think. And then we went from Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, and along with that, we followed the food trucks which went around every day. So the food was still delivering kids food every day. Um, so we made certain stops. And I did the long route, which was, we start at the school, um, stop up here at Upper Dry Creek, then to Sunnyside, then to Wolf Point, then to the Hamlets, um, to Simnasho, and then over to Sid Walter at the fire hall, and then we came back. And it took us about a little over four hours. So, um, and we got a group, so, you know, group, the same group of kids, you know, we had them, uh, they'd pick up food, and then the days we were there, they'd pick up curriculum stuff, so. Um, that was going along really smooth, and then, I think that was my, like, we got the first COVID person, you know, first person to get COVID here at Warm Springs. Then I kind of panicked a little, like, do I want to keep doing this, you know, so, you know, but. You know, I thought, well, you know, we're being safe. We have all our, you know, we had our sanitizer. We had, we're wearing a mask. We had gloves, everything we needed. So we just continued doing it until the end. I think we did it until the end of the school year. Then we broke for the summer. Um, didn't know what I was going to do for summer because um, I usually always find a summer job. Um, and so they told us we were done until uh, school started back up in September. So. I didn't know what to do for the summer and didn't know if I, you know, should find a summer job with the pandemic and knowing that everything else was closing and everything. And then, then I got the opportunity to um, work at the admin building. Cheryl Tom called and, she, you know, she says, hey, are you wanting to work this summer? And I was like, sure, yeah, you know, what am I going to do? You know, I didn't know. And she said they needed somebody to do temperatures down at the, the admin building. And I said, oh, yeah, sure, I can do that. Uh, you know, and I thought, do I need to do training or anything? She says, no, you're just doing temperatures, you know. So I was like, okay. Um, so I started, I went down and started doing that. And uh, n there wasn't a whole lot of people working. So it was just like, I think they were barely at the 50% um, or whatever. So, and uh, so I was doing the temperature checks. Um, the numbers started getting higher here at, you know, in Warm Springs. Um, and being able, because I was working down by the tribal council side, so in a way I kind of felt like, you know, just, just watching their meetings and, you know, wait, you know, seeing them, you know, a few little discussions, you know, out there, I start thinking, you know, well, you know, they're just listening here and there, you could tell that, you know, it's something that they were, you know, really trying to track, you know, get down on and trying to figure out what, what we need to do, you know, for our community. When they say you're exposed, 
Uh, there was one time down there, they said, oh, we're getting somebody to come cover for you because you were exposed to COVID. And I was like, you know, and then and that's what it came down to. I said, well, I'm exposed every time I leave my house. You know, that, that was just my, my feeling towards it. And, um, and it happened to be at one of the times that council shut down because I had contact with every person that came in. And so, and it was at the time when they were shut down. And I said, okay, so they go, oh, we're just gonna have somebody cover you here. You go do your test and come home. I come back to work. And I was like, okay, you know, and, I, and when I was driving up there, I was thinking, well, how come they do a test and they go home? I go do a test, I go back to work. And then it took, then it was those um, long tests. You know, it took you a while to get your call back. So it was just like, you know, did you get your call? Did you get your call? You know, they kept asking me, did you get your call? I said, no, I didn't. And I said, should I call them? And they're like, oh, no. I said, okay. And then I finally like got my call and they said that it was negative. So, you know, but even though, and then I thought, well, if I was positive, I was still exposing every person that came into the admin. So, you know, I was just like, you know, I didn't want to, you know, if I was positive, how was I going to feel if I said, you know, I'm positive and I've exposed everybody. <laughs> and so um, I think at that point when I went and did my first COVID test was the first time that I think I kind of panicked because that was what I thought is, what if I'm positive, you know, then everybody that came through here, you know, I was positive and, you know, but it came back negative and, and it was, you know, I was okay, you know, and, and that was the only time. I think that's the only time that I was required to go do a test. Um, the only other, then after that was, I was trying to get into dental. Um, and I still haven't gotten into dental, but uh, I was trying to get into dental. And they said, well, you have to have a negative test before you can get in. I said, okay. So I went in, did a test, and called them and said, okay, I just did my test. Well, we have to wait for the results to come back. Okay. So they called me and said it was negative. I called Daniel again. I never did get in. <laughs> they said, we don't have any appointments for you. <laughs> so I went and did a test, you know, I found out it was negative, but did it for nothing because I didn't get into dental. In our family, we do a lot of stuff together. Um, we do Thanksgiving, Christmas, you know, everything. We plan everything. Um, the last one was Easter. We still haven't done a family get together yet. Uh, because of it, um, we're, most of us are vaccinated. All of us older ones went in right away. It was just convincing the younger kids to, you know, get vaccinated so we can start doing our stuff again. You know, my thing after working down at the council and seeing all this other stuff going on, I realized how important it is to wear masks and gloves if you, can, you know, if you need to, doing, depending on what you're doing and everything else. It's just like at the school, you know, convincing people you walk in a room and they're all like, oh, oh, you know, you know, and like I said, I, I'm used to masks now. And I was, I told them at the school, I said, yeah, I consider myself a mask police, you know, yeah, I, I think everybody needs to wear masks. And I kept, you know, and I kept bringing it up all the time, you know, not everybody wears masks. If you're the only person in the whole room, I could see you not wearing a mask, but when there's other people around, I believe you should have a mask on. And, you know, and then fully covered, you know, everything else like that. And, you know, and, and I told them since I, you know, since the beginning of this, I've always, you know, you know, go ahead and, so because some of them got upset because I would, you know, like, you know, just bring it up all the time and they didn't like wearing masks. but. You know, and I, I got, it got to a point where I said, you know, they don't wear masks, I think they should be sent home, or I'm gonna go home, <laughs> I told them. Cause I didn't wanna, you know, I don't know, I just didn't wanna be that, happen to get it through that, you know. And, you know, and I said, we're getting ready for kids to come to school, and we have to wear masks in order for kids to come back to school. Um, and it got better up there. Uh, then they started, then we started handing out the computers, so, um, we just delivered them at the school, plus we drove some out to people that couldn't come in. Um, mainly like the students with the elders that are taking care of them, you know, we didn't want to have to risk them coming all the way in to do that. And, you know, because they're the ones, you know, mainly that, those are the students that I was also worried about. Didn't want them to have to come in and, you know, take it back to their grandparents that are taking care of them and, and stuff like that because, um, you know, they were more at risk of, of, you know, doing that. And we had some that, didn't leave their houses and everything. So we just kind of boxed them and, you know, put them in, tried to put everything that they could understand so that all they have to do is open up the computer and it works. <laughs>